Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Joe, and this is another session of Joe Talks. Today, I have a really good friend of mine, Matthew Curley. Thank you so much for joining me today. No problem. So Matt, take a couple seconds, take a couple minutes if you want. Tell us a little about who you are and what Ion Communications is. So my name is Matthew, and I start an internet service provider to provide high-speed internet to Colorado. Okay, so what does that mean, high-speed internet exactly? So typically, you might get anywhere from a couple hundred megabits down and maybe, you know, max 35 up or so. Okay. My slowest package is 100 down and 100 up. So we're, we're both technologists, if you will, but for the, just, just so that the audience understands, why, first of all, why would you start an internet company when we have so many options here, here in Colorado Springs? Help, help me understand the thought process and the mindset that brought you into this space because, I mean, respectfully, you're one person, you might have a couple people who work with you, but there are huge companies out there. So what's, what's the story behind Ion Communications? So that's a good question. We started um, Ion about a year and a half ago and I was inspired by a trip I took to Switzerland. And I was very impressed by the coffee shop Wi-Fi, which was 500 down and 500 up, wow. sitting upstairs in a coffee shop. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's put this into perspective, okay? Um, what can you do with 500 megs download? What, what exactly does that mean for, for individuals who might not understand that? So that means videos will never buffer, 8K loads instantly, and nothing will ever slow down. Okay, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to watch Netflix and do email at the same time and maybe upload something to YouTube or maybe even do a live stream, how much data would that require typically in terms of a download speed? Uh, depending on the remote server, about 100 to 200 megabits down okay. and about another 100 to 200 up. Okay, okay. So... I think by what you're saying in Switzerland, you're experiencing some insane speeds. Oh yeah. <laughs> in a coffee shop, nonetheless, in a coffee right? Shop. What would you say is an average speed that you would get here in Colorado Springs at home? I would say average is about 75, 75 to 150. To 150. Okay. So is that not fast enough for you? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true tech guy. Got it, got it. Okay. So why did you start buying? You said slow speeds and stuff like that, but why did you start ION? Because I feel there's a need for more competition okay. in the broadband space. Okay, okay. So what were some challenges, some, some difficulties that, that you came across when you were first looking to start your company? Um, biggest thing, obviously, and this is true with any new company, is capital. Okay. But I was lucky enough to have my parents supply the initial amount of funding. Wow, that is definitely a blessing, to say the least. I mean... Not very many people that I know of, I mean, myself being an entrepreneur, it's very rare that we have people who are willing to support us as much as that. So that's kudos to your parents. So I'm curious, was there a trade-off? Was it you either start a company, you don't start a company, you go to college? So what, what was that trade-off like? Uh, so they really wanted me to go to college. Okay. But I eventually convinced them that this was a more alternative and fun path to An choose. alternative and fun path. So... <laughs> That is definitely unorthodox. So uh, myself, I guess with my upbringing, with my culture, it was expected and frankly demanded that I go to university. How, <laughs> I'm actually very curious. Explain to me what was said and what was done because you just explained to me that your parents wanted you to go to college, but you were able to convince them of an alternative education, if you I mean, starting a business is in essence a learning experience, right? So. Yeah. How did you convince them? Share with, share with some of our watchers and listeners today, if people want to start businesses, what is some good arguments or definitive points that they can make? Um, I say that you should be persistent okay. and not afraid to fail. Not afraid to fail. Okay. I mean, you make a good point there, Matt. Do, do you prefer Matt or Matthew? Whatever. Guy, got it, okay. <laughs> Emperor of Mars. <laughs> okay, fair enough, Emperor of Mars. So I think one thing that you've, that you've said, you know, you have to not be afraid to fail. Uh, we've known each other a long time. We actually met at, uh, what was it, a million cups, one million cups? Yep. Down at the Catalyst campus back in 2016 or 17. It was, it was a long time ago. Yeah. And 
uh, I was there with one of the companies I was working with and one of the biggest things that I come across is people are so comfortable in their current environments that they're afraid, if you will, to step out, take a leap of faith, maybe lose some money, maybe get sued, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? But I, I think you make a good point. A lot of people, they go to college, they spend a lot of money, they either have the ability to uh, to dip into a savings account or a trust fund or a college savings account, whatever the case is, but other times, the majority of Americans, they have to go out and get student loans. That in itself is an investment. And based off of our previous conversations, it sounds as if your parents looked at it and you were able to convince them of the fact that instead of investing potentially into a college degree, you're investing into a future for yourself. Would, right. you, would you agree with that? Yeah, so instead of potentially graduating with some student debt and no guarantee of a job, in the couple years I've started ION, mm -hmm. we're already almost to the point where I can pay myself and a team very handsomely. Fantastic. And just how... just off of, you know, a couple subscribers. Sure. Well, I, I sincerely hope you have more than a, just a couple subscribers. But <laughs> So how long has I'm been around for now? A uh, year and a half. A year and a half. Wow, that's really fantastic. You know, uh, I read some somewhere on the internet, and of course we can believe everything we read on the internet. I read that most businesses will either succeed or fail uh, at the one and a half year mark. And there's a very high percentage of businesses that fail. So kudos to you. The fact that you're getting it out there, going out, kicking down doors, and doing your internet stuff. Literally, I'm sorry, I have a couple of door repair bills today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little too enthusiastic. Well, see, that's, that's okay. I mean, through and through, Matt, you're an engineer, yes? Would you yes. consider yourself an engineer or would you consider yourself a business person? More of an engineer at this point. Okay, so let's actually, let's, let's dive down that. What kind of an engineer would you say you are? Uh... Would you say you're a self-taught engineer? Yeah, self-taught. Self-taught? Uh, mostly network stuff. Network, okay. Yeah. So this is what I love about people like you and I. I mean, you're, you're a lot younger than I am. Not by much, though. But you're, you're definitely younger than I am. And not many people out there are willing to say, you know what? I have an interest in X field. I'm going to try and go out and see what I can do in X field. You've clearly embraced that. I mean, I, I remember... When you were first starting the company, you, you were at my house until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and we're just, you know, cracking away on the computer and doing God knows what. <laughs> we'll never admit it. <laughs> but, but, I mean, in, in all seriousness though, you're out there, you're, you're making a difference for yourself. You're taking your own future into your own hands. Would you say that this is an experience that you would give up for college, per se? Not at this point. Not at this point. I mean... I don't think you or I, I don't think either of us are saying that college is unimportant. College is an incredibly important and foundation of who we are as a society. But you're doing something that not many people have been able to do. You've gone out and taken some money and you've started a company that by your own admission you can support yourself and an old team, your, your own team handsomely. So you, you mentioned capital is one of the things that have held you back. What else has held you back? Uh, willingness for people to sign up for my service. And what I mean by that is actually a lot of people are in contracts. Mm -hmm. And so while they may go, hey, we love your service, we can clearly see the benefit, mm -hmm. they're a little bit stuck. Okay, okay. So what have you done to overcome that obstacle? So right now we have a list and it's about three times longer than our current customer base of people who are just in contracts. Okay. And at some point it'll be worth it to buy those out. Okay, okay. I'm very excited to see how that, how that goes. As your company grows and you have more financial liquidity and freedom, I'm very excited for not just you, but for the people on that list. Because it sounds like you're able to provide speeds that maybe the other competitors here might not be able to offer. Okay, very good. So tell me about some of your successes. So we've had a couple local startups that have raised large seed rounds. They okay. use our service. Um, several co-working spaces use our service, and creative agencies love us for our high upload speeds. Okay, great. So what would you say is a target market of people who could use your service the best? Anyone who's technically savvy, anyone who needs high uploads, like content creators uploading videos, 
anyone who's involved in uh, machine learning and AI research to pull down large data sets for training. Okay. Um, just any kind of more technically savvy user. So, so let me ask you this question then, just because having lived all over the country and worked in different parts of the world, one of the biggest frustrations that I have had with internet service providers is data caps. Do you cap your customers at all or anything like that? I mean, first of all, I think that is my first question. Do you cap data for your customers? I mean, if I'm, if I'm subscribed to a 500 meg or a one gig download pipe, are you going to tier my speeds at any point in time? Are you going to slow down my speeds? No. Why is that? So we're building out our network to support more bandwidth than anyone can possibly use. And okay. quite frankly, it's cheaper to just build out a large pipe from the start than it is to try to tier people into speeds. I see. And reduce their data based on, so, or reduce speed based on data cap. Okay, that makes sense. Well, then let me ask this question that I'm sure a lot of people um, living in the more remote areas probably have questions. Why do certain internet companies tear down your speeds? Why do certain companies uh, maybe even charge you per megabyte? Why, why, why do other companies, in your opinion, I mean, you, you obviously are in the ISP space, internet service provider space. Yeah. Can you shed some light into why other companies might do what you don't do? I think it's a couple things. One is aging infrastructure that mm -hmm. they've been reluctant to upgrade. Okay. Two, because of that, there's a lot of bottlenecks okay. at certain places, so they have to place those speed limits okay. there. Otherwise, the whole network would go down and slow down a lot. Okay. Okay. Which it usually does anyway, but I mean, we, we've all experienced it. I mean, sometimes I'll be on my phone, and then one of my colleagues I'm, that I'm on a work trip with, you know, my, my phone internet speech just got slowed down. So I, I appreciate you bringing some of that insight into the discussion. Uh, another question that I have to ask, and I don't mean to be ageist here, but you are a younger individual. Have you run into any issues where people will look at you and say, "Huh, he's a young kid. There's no way he knows what he's doing," and maybe? As a result, choose not to do business with you. Have you experienced anything like that? Um, none where they've directly refused business with me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, thankfully, I think the way to overcome that now is that I've been in business a year and a half, so sure. it's become much easier. Sure. I'm actually, a lot of the people I asked at the start back in February, mm -hmm. I'm now circling back to them a year and a half later. Okay. And since I'm still around, they're actually taking me much more seriously now. Okay, great. I mean, I'm sure you've had customers since the very beginning, and I'm sure they love to see you and just see how your business is going, yes? Yeah, they, okay. uh, they let me use them as a referral, and great. I get quotes from them and all that. Well, then let me ask one other question. To young entrepreneurs and to other individuals who are trying to get out of the rat race, what are some key performance indicators, KPIs, or what are some things that you would recommend that they do so that they can get out on their own and get out from an eight to five job. What, what, what are some recommendations you have, Matt? I would say find a need mm -hmm. in your community and then find something you like. Okay. And then go and run with it. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So go and run with it. So I understand that a lot of times we have friends and families or other individuals that they have such great ideas but they either don't have the capital for it or they don't have the time for it. Do you have any advice as to what they can do to break out of that mold? I mean, the answer could be, I don't know. But I'm curious, since you're, you're a year and a half into your first business, what would you say to the people that have great ideas but just don't know what to do next? <laughs> so ask around for help. When I started this company and before even I got my parents to give me a single dollar, mm -hmm. I actually asked the data center if I could start testing this equipment on their roof for free. Interesting. Okay. And they let me, they set me up with my own internet access. They let me set up all this equipment on the roof mm -hmm. to start testing for a little bit until I could build that revenue. And how long did that testing or how long did that conceptualization phase go until you started your business officially? Uh, about three months. About three months. Okay. So it is possible. I mean, you've done it. And you're a very smart person. There's a lot of other people with tremendous ideas. I, I think that's the intention of these business tech talks. I want to get on <laughs> young entrepreneurs like yourself. I want to learn your story. And I want other people to hear about your story. Just the other day, I was talking to a young lady. She, uh, she'd involved, uh, she had gotten involved in some MLMs, multi-level marketing. And, you know, there's unfortunately a lot of negative press on MLMs. 
And in the same regard, there's high earning potential. So people have asked me, well, do I consider MLM as a business? And do I consider people such as yourself entrepreneurs? Absolutely. I think at the end of the day, money is green, right? Money comes and goes, and there's always an opportunity to make money. Of course, trying to stay within ethical and moral standards, of course. As long as you are providing a positive service to the people in your community, there is then an opportunity for the community to see value in your business. And they're going to exchange dollars for your service. So I, I, I would love to have a follow-up with you, probably in six months or so, maybe even earlier. I'm, I'm sure we'll have you on for other talks. We'll talk about Wi-Fi penetration testing and whatever not. But today, I, <laughs> but honestly, today, I really just wanted to focus on your business. Matt, this has been such a pleasure. I'm really glad you, 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 you decided to come and have this conversation with me. I would love to follow up with you in six months. And maybe you can provide even more advice or even better or wise advice to others who are looking to start businesses. Matt, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. I, I'm looking forward <laughs> to having you on. So. Cool. Now, before we sign off, guys, you may have noticed that I have a Google Home Mini. So I wanted to offer this up as a giveaway to the 1,000th subscriber to my YouTube channel. So I have a YouTube channel. It is called Joe Talks. I also have a Facebook page, Joe Talks. I'll link it in my video below. But I'm really looking forward to doing more of these talks, guys, and just having motivated and smart people such as Matt today come on and talk with us. So I really appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to having further conversations. Have a good rest of your day, guys. Thanks.